really slow. Here I am in the port side engine room. We've had a problem with the port engine where it was stubborn to shut down. So I'd hold in the red button on the control panel and the engine would sort of uh, sputter a bit and take a while to actually shut down. And I've since worked out what the problem is. Over here is a solenoid. This solenoid is connected to 12 volts and when I push the red button on the control panel I get 12 volts over these terminals here. That solenoid pulls on this cable over here which is a bit like a brake cable on a bicycle and that cable follows through all the way here to this lever. This lever is the fuel shut off so if you push this lever in when the engine is running it shuts off the fuel supply to the engine and starves the engine of fuel and shuts the engine down. <coughs> the problem is that when I put 12 volts on this solenoid. Be on. Press. Okay, Doesn't do anything. So I'm going to replace the solenoid. This is the replacement solenoid that I got from a company here in Australia called Micromax. They are uh, they were incredibly responsive. Shipped the unit overnight uh, before they'd even taken payment, um, and it is uh, a replacement for the part that is currently in the engine. So um, I'm going to stick this one in now. Here are the boys making a camp in the mangrove. I went, to, I went to just check that the that the port side engine was in neutral and I was going to, we were getting ready to leave uh, the uh, pull up the anchor and get ready to go and uh, I've had to kind of fight the, 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 the throttles mainly getting in and out of gear a bit before and I gave it a bit of energy and then I just heard this like splintering um, sound just behind where the gear levers are or where the throttles are so then we went to take a look over here which is where the coupling is between the gear lever and the the cable and there was a whole lot of splintered plastic which looked a little bit like 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 this and that had splintered out of the gap that is supposed to hold the outer cover of the, the outer casing of this cable in place um, and so clearly nothing's, nothing's working now as well because there's no resistance on the cable. So what I'm trying to do is create some kind of a washer that I can stick around there that will hold this outer casing in place. The options we had were these two, stainless washer. That's a nice wide diameter, which I quite like, and I might try that second. But this is a, like a split ring, which is going to make the job slightly easier. I'm in the process now of modifying one of these washers. Um, uh, so that um, we can slip it around the uh, that that cable housing, and that's where I've got to so far. Just been uh, widening the gap there a little bit, and I'll see if I can slip it around. So that washer does work; it fits in place, which is great. I'll just hold it in that plastic casing for now. <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. If that works, so we can shift gears with the lever, then I think we're okay for now. And then I'll put that casing back together. So. I'll... So that first washer didn't quite work, it was a bit small, did you say, babe? I think it may have been a bit small, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was a bit small. 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 Yeah, it
So the, the plastic housing that uh, is what holds the sheath or the cover of the cable in place that is used to shift the gear lever on the sail drive, um, that plastic housing is brittle and cracking and busy breaking. Um, uh, importantly, there was like a little washer that we showed earlier that's broken. So I made uh, I made a washer, one out of a one washer out of a split pin, a split ring like this, and then another one out of a, uh, a stainless steel washer like that. There, I just cut the sides open on both of those so that they were a bit more U-shaped, and then I could slip them around the collar on the cable and then slot them into the plastic case. But because the plastic case is so brittle. Um, I've ended up wrapping cable ties around the whole thing and it's like it's definitely not ideal so I'll need to replace that part. Mm. But it does seem now like I'm able to shift gear properly um, on the port side engine which is great. Um, so for now I think we'll be able to, to get going. We're 15 minutes late for the split bridge so we're going to have to aim for a later time. I think there's an 11 o'clock or 11 a.m. Mm. and then after that only lunchtime. So, so. There was a problem on, on our port side engine where pushing the red stop button in the control panel wasn't killing the engine, or at least wasn't killing it very effectively. Then it would kind of splutter um, and it finally die. And I've since worked out that there are generally two ways to stop uh, a diesel engine by cutting off the fuel. So cutting off the fuel is a way to stop the diesel engine. And there are two ways to do that. One is mechanically and the other is uh, mechanically but controlled electrically. So in our case, it's a, a mechanical shut off controlled electrically, meaning you push a button, that sends 12 volts to a relay, a relay turns on, sends 12 volts with a higher current capability to a solenoid. The solenoid then is an electromagnet effectively, which turns electrical energy into mechanical energy. It pulls and does the work of someone manually pulling a lever out that kills the engine. This is the old solenoid on that side, which I thought was toast. The way a solenoid works basically is you've got coils inside the body, it's relatively heavy. Those coils act like an electromagnet. The mechanical side here is an arm which is uh, magnetic and when, that, when the, the coils get energized, it creates an electromagnet and pulls this arm in and that arm then gets pulled in all the way. Um, I think what had happened with the solenoid, I, I bought a new one and I replaced and it took me a while to actually find the replacement part and ended up going to a company called Micromax and they were extremely efficient. It wasn't a very cheap piece, but they were a fantastic company, so I highly recommend them, Micromax. Um, the problem, I think, is that I had pulled out this arm a bit too much. It had extended a bit too far, and even though the coils were being energized, it wasn't pulling the arm in. So I realized that at about 2 o'clock this morning when I woke up worrying about the anchor, um, and I tried, that in, I tried that today. I just pushed that arm in a little bit, and suddenly the solenoid is working, so I'm getting engine shut off which is great. So actually there's a little bit of progress today. Um, I, feel, uh, I feel like we've got enough to be able to get going. I might put a few more cable ties around that um, part inside there that we were talking about previously to change gears um, and then we're ready to go.
the gate. Wow, just sticking them out. It was a good job to clean all the gunk off the hull. I think we, being a bit cleaner, we're a little bit smoother down below now, and so now we're flying along. Um, we're going at seven knots here now, and it's effortless. Ha, ha, ha. 